what are the most important first steps in a healthy marriage? What are the Anybody? most important first steps in a healthy marriage? Read the Bible. Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> but God's way. For, for, he, see, he's going he's to go with the verse for it. But the, the first and foremost, the most important thing is Jesus. If two people set out and say, I don't care what I think, I don't care what I want, God wins, you will have a successful marriage. And if you have an issue, then it comes back to, well, what does God say? All right, now that's going to be what we do. And so I would say that is the, the first and foremost. And pastor's got a verse. Oh, I do have, I have verses. Okay. But first, I think when we think, well, what's the one thing? There's really not just one thing. There's so many different things that come into play in a relationship. All right. But... Uh, when I think about a foundation for marriage, a good marriage, a lot of people consider Proverbs 31 to be the proverb of the virtuous woman, but it has so much about marriage. And it says in verse 10, it says, an excellent wife who can find, she is of far more value than rubies. Uh, one of the thing, one of the foundations things that are necessary in a marriage is to appreciate your spouse. So often, in short order, we're taking everything our spouse does for granted. It's just what they're doing. Right? But you've got to appreciate your spouse. In fact, later on in the same chapter, uh, it says it this way. Uh, let's see. Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and says, many women have done well, but you've done better than them all. I mean, he's appreciating her. He's vocal about his appreciation. Uh, I think that's absolutely key. Then the heart of her husband is safely trust in her, the next verse. And a lot of people think that love is the foundation of marriage, but it's not. Trust is the foundation of marriage. If, if you love somebody with all your heart, but you cannot trust them, your marriage is going on the rocks. You say, I love my husband, but when he gets the paycheck, he stops off and he buys drugs and he's gone for three days and we don't get the money to pay the rent and buy food. Now, you can love him, but how many of you know if you can't trust him, you're in trouble? Right? Um, and a key to trust is some, it's really something that you begin to build before you're married, not once you get married. In fact, the, the easiest time to build trust is before you're married. Um, sexually, before you're married, you're, you're attracted to this person. But when you abstain because it's the right thing to do is unto the Lord, right? that puts trust into your marriage. Um, if you don't, you're married, you're gone, something happens, and the spouse says, well, you know, they knew that this was wrong before we were married, but they did it anyway. What are they doing now that they know is wrong? Right? So that trust is, is absolutely key. And uh, then the next verse, she does him good and not harm all the days of her life. It's an attitude of, I am going to bless my spouse every day. I'm gonna do what's good for my spouse every single day. Those are just some of the, but there's so many different things that are key in marriage. Yeah. Um, when it says, what are the most important or first steps to a healthy marriage? Before that was a question about, I'm still single, even though I want to be married. What if I'm still single? And I think this is the, that's the time you build the foundation. That's the time you become the um, giver, a servant, um, practice serving, practice loving God with all of your heart and more than yourself. And um, you, yeah, you keep praying the foundation. You begin a healthy marriage before you get married. You, you exactly what he was saying, that practicing. Or you can spend your time before you get married complaining. You can pr spend it crying. You can spend it wishing. Or you can spend your time looking in all the wrong places. And going after, well, you know, in the world, they do it a different way. They find spouses in the wrong places and 
with the wrong methods. And, and so it, you can either pursue God and serving and loving God more and um, becoming uh, just that kind of faithful, loving, serving, giving person that makes an awesome spouse. Or you can um, chase the world's way and then end up in counseling because you got a spouse who really doesn't want to live right either and, and have to straighten it up afterwards. Um, as you go through and you go, right, if we're going to do it God's way, what are some of these like fundamental things? They went through a bunch of them. Um, forgive. I don't care who you married. They're not perfect. Um, and they will do something stupid at some point. They will say something they shouldn't have said, or they won't say something that they should have said. Whatever the case may be, being quick to forgive is required for good relationships. And I love your, your point. You kind of brought in this, this other question of, well, what if I'm single and I don't want to be? Well, then the first thing to do is to work on this now. The, if you wait until you're married to start working on your marriage, you're waiting until after the problem arises. <laughs> and, and that's counterproductive. But I mean, if you look and you go, okay, hey, right now, I'm going to work on this. There is plenty of opportunities to practice forgiving. Yeah. If not, leave the basement. Like, <laughs> as soon as you contact more people, you will find more opportunities. Just drive in rush hour. You'll have opportunities to forgive somebody. Um, but when we choose to forgive, when we choose to assume the best, it changes the trajectory of our marriage. And you can start that before you even get married because it'll, it'll affect all of your relationships. But those are some of the, the fundamentals for having a good marriage. You know, it uses the word steps in the question. And what, a couple of steps I took years ago to help me get to a healthy marriage is um, learning my priorities. Uh, my priority, and the truth is my confession um, for years before even we got married, in our relationship, I prioritized Maddie over God because I wanted to be with her all the time. And, yeah. you know, and I just wanted to spend time with her and all these things. And, you know, it, it, I wasn't, it wasn't on purpose. I just, I fell into it. And it's like, I learned that, oh, wait, God, you're, you want number one. Yeah. <laughs> you want number one, right? And I gave that. And, I, and geographically, it worked out because I ended up going to Bible school. So I had no choice. But that, that choice was a huge help for me to take my steps. And so years ago, I, I went through my notes on my phone. And I, and I still have it. And I read it every once in a while. But I prioritized my relationship with God first then my wife, then my kids, and then the list kind of goes on. And it's like when I can remind myself and apply those priorities, it just, it works. Because it wasn't working when God was number two, but it started working when God was number one. Yeah, I think one of the steps, two fundamental steps are communication. Like before we get married, and even if you're married now, these are great things to have conversations with your spouse. Um, when we meet with uh, couples that are about to get married, which is quite often, um, there are three things that we always talk about. And it is priority, because we've experienced what that looks like. It is pursuit, so pursuing one another, knowing each other well. That's where I like to talk about the five love languages. Do you know your future spouse? Do you know the way they receive love? Do you know the way they like to be loved? And I'll, majority of the time it's what is that what's five love languages and it's like it's a great tool to know coming into your relationship that even though touch is my favorite thing his is words of affirmation so I have to work at that because you know it's not my top thing but I can be all over him all day long you know but that's not going to fill him at all I mean I mean, it'll fill him a little bit, but not like, a, like the way he wants to be loved. So that's pursue. And then the last one is passion. Talk about your visions. Talk about your passions. Talk about where you want to go. Have a vision. So those are the three things that I tend to, we tend to have, um, we tend to talk to our couples 
about communicating beforehand. But if you're married and you're like, we've never had those conversations, those are great conversations to have because it's not too late to have vision. It's not too late to continue to learn each other. Our love languages have changed after 15 years. I'm not the same person I was, thank you, Jesus, 15 years ago. And aren't we thankful, everyone, right? Yes, he's gonna continue to love me. But have clear communication all the time. And I know seasons of, sometimes I'm like, Jess, I don't even know who we are anymore because it's like kids, kids, you know, life, work, ministry, and then kids again. It, it, it gets to a point where you feel like you're kind of fading away. Catch that. Catch it quick. Those are the moments where I'm like, I'm feeling empty clear communication. Jess, I feel like we're not on the same page. I feel like we're not seeing the same thing. Let's stay in the same page with our passions, our pursuits, and our priorities.